Go one and call the Jew to the court. Make room. Let him stand before our face. He has come, my lord. Shylock, the world thinks, and I think so too, that you but leave this fashion of your malice to the last hour of the act. And then, tis thought you'll show your mercy and remorse, more strange than is your strange apparent cruelty. What say you, Joe? We all expect a gentle answer. I have informed your grace of what I purpose. And by our holy Sabbath have I sworn to have the due and forfeit of my bond. If you deny it, let the danger light upon your charter and your city's freedom. You'll ask me why I rather choose to have a weight of human flesh than to receive 3,000 ducats. I'll not answer that, but say it is my humor. Is it answered? What if my house be troubled by a rat, and I am pleased to give 10,000 ducats to have it killed? What, are you answered yet? Some men there are love not a gaping pig, some that are mad if they behold a cat, and others when the bagpipe sings in the nose cannot contain their urine. For affection, master of passion, sways it to the mood of what it likes or loathes. Now for your answer. As there is no firm reason to be rendered why he cannot abide a gaping pig, why he, a harmless, necessary cat, why he, a woolen bag pipe, but of force must yield to such inevitable shame as to offend himself being offended, so can I give no reason, nor will I not, more than a lodged heat, and a certain loathing I bear Antonio that I follow thus this losing suit against him. Are you answered? No! This is no answer. You unfeeling man to excuse the current of your cruelty. I am not bound to please you with my answers. Do all men kill the things they do not love? Oh, no. Hates any man the thing he would not kill? No. <laughs> Every offense is not a hate at first. No. You would have a serpent sting you twice? No! I pray you, think you question with the Jew. You may as well go stand upon the beach and bid the main flood low at its usual height. <sighs> may as well question with the wolf why he has made the ewe bleat for the lamb. You may as well do anything most hard as seek to soften that. And which what's harder is Jewish heart. Therefore, I do beseech you, make no more offers, use no farther means, but with all just and plain conveniency, let me have judgment and the Jew his will. No!
if every ducat in 6,000 ducats were in six parts and every part a ducat, I would not draw them. I would have my bond. How shall you hope for mercy giving none? What judgment should I fear doing no wrong? You have among you many a purchased slave, which like your asses and your dogs and mules, you use in abject and in slavish parts because you bought them. Shall I say to you, let them be free? Marry them to your heirs. Why sweat they under burdens? Let their beds be made as soft as yours. Their pallets seasoned with your food. You will answer, the slaves are ours. So do I answer you. The pound of flesh that I demand of him is dearly bought. Tis mine. Tis mine. Tis mine. If you deny me, fie upon your law! <laughs> there is no force in the decrees of Venice. I stand for judgment. Answer. Shall I have it? <laughs> On my power, I may dismiss this court, unless Bellario, a learned doctor that I have sent for to determine this, come here today. My lord. He stays without a messenger with letters from the doctor, and you come from Padua. Coming from Padua? From old Bellario? From both, my lord. Bellario greets your grace. Why do you wet your knife so earnestly? To cut the forfeiture from that bankrupt there. And no prayers, Pierce! No. None that you have wit enough to. Be you damned! An external dog! For your life, let justice be accused. Till you can rail the seal from off my bond, you but offend your lungs to speak so. Prepare your wit, good youth, or it will fall to cureless ruin. I stand here for law. I stand for law. This letter does commend a young and learned doctor to our court. Well, where is he? He attendeth here hard by to know your answer, whether you'll admit him. Go, give him courteous conduct to this place. Meantime, the court shall hear Bellario's letter. Your grace shall understand that at the receipt of your letter, I am very sick. But in the instant your messenger came, there was with me a young doctor of Rome, whose name is Balthazar. He comes at my asking to take my place. I beseech you, let his lack of years be no impediment, for I never knew so young a body with so old a head. I leave him to your gracious acceptance. You heard Bellario, what he writes. Oh, and here I take it, is the doctor come. You are welcome. Take your place. Are you acquainted with the difference that holds this present question in the court? I am informed thoroughly of the case. Which is the merchant here and which the Jew? Antonio and old Shylock. Both stand forth. Is your name Shylock? Shylock is my name. Of a strange nature is a suit you follow. Yet in such rule that the Venetian law cannot deny you as you do proceed. You stand within his power, do you not? Aye, so he says. Do you confess the bond? 